listing on the security section because of um, what transpired. After all is said and done, what we have in terms of um, um, market uh, capitalization or the total assets in the market. Total assets on the market increased by 13.5% from what we had reported at the end of March 31st. So as we are speaking, we are seated at uh, 118 million or 100 and, yeah, 118 million uh, uh, billion from 102 billion at the end of uh, March uh, at the first uh, 2024. That's a significant increase, I think, in one quarter. And contributing to these changes, um, the, the largest contributor is uh, the market capitalization. Now, colleagues, you recall that market capitalization is based on the value of uh, listed securities. So if the prices are going up, then the market capitalization is going up as well. So market capitalization contributed 13.8% towards this um, um, uh, change in the market that we're talking about. Assets under management, these are uh, investments or savings made in our collective investment schemes went up by a collective um, amount of about 13% as well. We had a small change in corporate bonds, and we'll give uh, uh, further details uh, as, as we go. So in terms of uh, uh, equity performance, because what I was giving is like a summary of the total, but to break it down in terms of equity performance, um, I've already said we are seated at 113 uh, billion uh, from um, 102 that we had um, um, last time. Our target, which uh, probably we will speak into. Our target is to see that all assets on the capital markets should be at least 27% of uh, the GDP. So we are closer and we are following up on that because we sit at about 25.81%. So our target, our target growth is 27%. Uh, so the, um, some of the statistics uh, that contributed to the epic performance um, is uh, the Lusaka Osha index was up 8.42%. Now, the Lusaka um, Osha index is an index that tracks the performance of the securities on the market. So, for the first time in the history of uh, the index tracking, we reached 13,871 uh, points. So, we started counting from 100 where we're back. Now we are 13,871. That's a phenomenal type of uh, growth. And in terms of um, uh, market cap without short rate, we are up 10%. We sit at 69, almost 70 billion from 62 billion. So the question is, why without short rate? Short rate is one of the biggest counters on the market. But then, not all their securities can trade in Zambia. So we get to show you. Um, market cap with shop rate and market cap without shop rate. So without shop rate, we seated at 70 billion. With shop rate, we are seated at 113 uh, billion. In terms of volume, volume uh, compared between the two quarters was up 82% uh, from um, 3 million, 310 million, uh, um, uh, 3 million, 310,000 shares to 18,441,000 shares. Most of that shares that traded to increase the volume by the 2% is related to uh, Pamozi, like I said, because of the mandatory offer. So in terms of value, value trading, which we call turnover, is um, 118 um, billion compared to 16 or 17 billion. Uh, in the last quarter. So it's a phenomenal kind of growth, but there is an explanation to that because of uh, uh, the factor that I've talked about of uh, the Pamos effect if I'm correct. Turnover to market capitalization ratio is still very, very low. Uh, compared to the region, we should be talking about 7% um, um, percent and above, but we are still below a percent um, of market um, uh, turnover. Uh, to give you into perspective, 
we should have most of these securities trading for there to be what we call liquidity. But if people are holding on to a share, which means they're not exchanging hands, then you have a low market uh, a capitalization ratio, which is uh, desirable. I've already spoken about the Osaka OSHA index, uh, which is saying reached the highest in uh, the longest of our times uh, since uh, the markets have started uh, looking at this. In terms of collective investment schemes, uh, we are very, very desirous of growing the collective investment scheme space, and we see this as our growth uh, area. So, in terms of assets under management, so these are uh, the, the, the funds that uh, several fund managers are um, managing. Increased by 119 or 120 million, and now we sit at a collective uh, uh, number of 2.5 billion. Our target, our target if you go into the market, um, the market capital markets and development plan, is to have a hundred billion dollars um, fund. We are close there. We're seated probably at about 80 million, 80 to 90 million dollars. Our target by the end of the year is to reach 100 million dollars. It sounds like a lot of money, but if you compare to the region, that's a very, very small um, saving. So we need to encourage people through you, the media, to save uh, for the future. In terms of the numbers of people saving, our review of uh, the last census statistics shows that um, adult population is about 7 million people. And um, according to our records, looking at the number of investors, we were seated at 606,000 investors, um, which is almost like 10% of adult population. I think we have exceeded our target of about 3%. We are now seated about 10%, but that's still not good enough. We need to get most of the 7 million people investing um, is, uh, for the future as it were. So um, we can split this uh, between um, the foreign, what we call foreign uh, savings and the local savings. In terms of local savings, out of the 2.5 billion, 2.2 billion uh, local savings, and uh, the balance, which is about 300,000, has been saved in foreign collective investment schemes through the various funds that are available on the market. That is about $13 million. So $13 million of our 2.5 uh, billion future is saved abroad by um, a number of people. So um, the other area that we look at, remember we talked about FEG, collective investment schemes now, corporate bonds. In terms of corporate bonds, the largest movement uh, during the period under review um, was um, um, as a result of what we reported on last time, which is the CEC uh, Green Bond, where they raised uh, $52 million. We are hopeful that CEC will be coming back onto the market again to raise more funding, especially given that uh, the country still needs in, um, a lot of investment in, uh, in power. You may recall that we had said CEC had registered a bond of $200 million. They raised $53 million of that, so they still have room to raise another $143 million for their power uh, project. So we are still seated at a total of 2.5 billion quacha in terms of corporate bonds. Now, colleagues, um, this number sounds like a lot of money, but uh, it's very, very little uh, compared to the targets that we should be uh, doing as, uh, as a market. So most of these investments, especially in power and infrastructure, could be done by raising money through uh, the capital markets. The other area of interest is um, government bonds. Now, government bonds are issued by the government through the central bank. But why do we talk about government bonds? Government bonds get to trade in what we sell or what we call the second market. So you can buy a bond from the central bank 
And if you need liquidity, you can actually sell your bonds. You do not have to wait for maturity. I think through the media, this is some information that we need to disseminate. When we had the town hall meeting the last two months, we had a lot of questions about bonds. We still have uh, people that need to be aware that bonds can sell and in fact have a liquid market where you can exchange your paper for cash when you need money. So in terms of uh, quarter two, the market for government bonds recorded 2,186 trades, which is 20% uh, higher than in the previous quarter. So 2,186 trades um, uh, of bonds were made. In the last quarter, we had recorded 1,809 trades, so that this is where the 20% uh, comes in. So the nominal value of the bonds that traded in quarter two was um, 13 billion, 13.8 billion, um, which is, however, 23% lower than what we recorded in uh, 20 uh, in the first quarter. So 13.8 billion. I think the outstanding government bonds. Uh, about something like 178 billion. So out of that, 13.82 billion did trade during the second uh, uh, quarter. We will share some of these uh, once we sanitize this and uh, uh, that you can uh, have. We again urge you to get to help us get to the public to inform them that um, we we do post on our website on a daily basis the trades in government security. Why do we do that? I always bring up a, um, a, an example. Everyone probably here knows what the exchange rate is. Because you can walk down Cairo Road, you can check quite a number of publications. Uh, Radio Phoenix and other stations, uh, religiously I think, report on exchange rates. We want to get to um, a level similar to that with respect to the prices uh, for, um, for, 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 for bonds. So, going to the Securities um, and Exchange website, you'll be able to find um, uh, data regarding bond trades, and we're doing it so that uh, the market would have a reference point when they are selling um, their bonds. We have uh, run our market fairly well during the quarter. We only received two complaints. And uh, these complaints um, are still outstanding. We only get to get to the public to share some of the details around that complaints once we have, for instance, finished uh, um, investigations or addressed such a complaints because some of them could, be, or could have sensitive information around that. In terms of uh, some of the activities that we do, uh, we are very much involved in the green space and uh, sustainable finance becomes key. What CEC raised and continues to raise on the market is uh, under the green finance um, um, aspect, and in particular, the green bonds. So uh, the Securities and Exchange Commission, the Bank of Zambia, together with the PIA, we have um, a secretariat that looks at um, the green finance mainstreaming. So this working group gets to um, uh, tackle financing aspects that could help us in uh, greening the economy, especially in this period when droughts um, have been such a big negative. Now we all know what adverse weather conditions can do. So it becomes easier to understand what green finance is all about. I never really appreciated it, but now we have, we have all been affected. If you try to do a small patch of uh, maize in, uh, around Lusaka, you probably do nothing. I expected 40 bags, we only have like four bags. So green finance becomes um, very, very key in um, our progressing or running away or protecting ourselves uh, even for food security. But we also look at it from uh, the capital markets uh, point of view as a sustainability issue. Again, when we talk about sustainability, imagine if all your investments have been made in a farm next to a river that runs every, every day. Suddenly, because of a huge drought, 
no more water flows down that stream. Can you imagine your investment? So your investment may not be sustainable, uh, depending on um, a number of factors. So you need to participate in the sustainability agenda for you to contribute to uh, the long-term sustenance of, the, of, um, of, our, of, our, of our country. So the green finance uh, strategy, the green bonds, and everything else that comes to sustainability is something that uh, the Commission is, um, is um, um, happy to spend time and resources to uh, participate in. So with respect to that, we are also trying to see if we can position Zambia as a destination for green investments. We have been engaging with municipal councils to um, see whether they can raise um, our bonds for their projects. We are also looking at um, uh, further uh, regulatory support or changes uh, in terms of our regulatory roadmap for nature-related risks with our colleagues uh, from the financial sector deep in Africa. And uh, we've become uh, members of the Sustainable Banking and Finance Network so that we, what we talk about we can actually practice or we can get to learn from our colleagues uh, within uh, this group. Um, uh, and uh, lastly but not, not the least, it's something that I've consistently spoken about. Um, it's a capital markets master plan. And I've raised the number of um, goals that we need to reach within a 10-year period. So um, um, collective investment schemes reaching $100 million is a target. Getting to 27 listings within um, uh, three years of launching this is one of the targets. So we have uh, five uh, thematic uh, areas that we are targeting, uh, that we are working on so that uh, we can achieve a developed uh, market um, um, as, as it were. So, again, through the media, help us sensitize the uh, public with respect to what we're doing. So we have formed action teams. I hope we are generous um, on, the, on some of these action teams. The action teams are going to be part of the implementation strategy for the five thematic areas where we have a number of strategies. I think it would be interesting for some of you colleagues seated around the table to join some of these action teams because through you then we can disseminate uh, what we will be doing. Of course, we are doing this with uh, the Ministry of uh, Finance who are the stakeholders or shareholders in this whole thing and um, we all have an agenda of developing uh, the, the market. Um, we also wanted to share the fact that um, the national financial inclusion strategy is still ongoing and our inclusion targets, like I say, is to ensure that um, we thought we could do 3% of adult population, we already seated at 10%. I hope we can easily move our targets up, but it's not just target. Financial inclusion is a reality because when people are financially included, then they get to resolve some of the life challenges all by themselves, such as uh, school fees, uh, paying for medical, uh, including nice things like going for holidays. I think financial inclusion people will be able to do it. So we would um, continue to engage you the stakeholders, I think, were the primary ones, and through you, other stakeholders. And that's why we are still going to the show. We went to trade fair, and we will be at the show. And uh, through the media game, we should be able to engage more and more people. One of the exciting things that is coming, I hope we get to um, uh, demonstrate at the show, is um, uh, it's not snakes and ladders. What is it called on there again? The monopoly. We've uh, tried to um, um, adapt monopoly into the capital markets. It will be exciting that some of you can come over to the show and uh, play monopoly. I hope you get to win. But then we are also having uh, tomorrow and Thursday. We have. Um, I, I think my colleagues will share the time. We are. Um, having three discussion sessions 
where we hope to further discuss some of the items that we talked about here, but more so regarding the development of the market and uh, what we can do around the implementation of the capital markets uh, uh, master plan. So those are some of the, the items that are coming forward and we urge you to participate, especially as we show up uh, um, at the show. So in conclusion, so that we can have a lot of time and interaction uh, around questions. Some of the aspects that we've um, uh, talked about and important. Um, how do we together with ourselves get to um, educate the public away from illegal products into uh, developmental and uh, safe products such as um, uh, the collective investment schemes? How do we get to improve activity? So with those remarks, it's um, now my pleasure to invite questions uh, from you like always and see to it that we can provide clarity on some of the issues that uh, I will talk about. Thank you very much. <coughs> questions? Next question. Yes. No. Um, uh, what factors lead to the 20 percent increase in trades in, in, in the number of trades in that region? The last one, so that we can take three hours, we are thinking about the next week. Third question, so that we take three questions. Yes, sir. Yeah, um, it's in relation to the green bonds. Yes. It's uh, something which is new in Zambia. Mm -hmm. And uh, very few people seem to be aware about it. Mm -hmm. So, my question is not really to realize it, but to try to make sure they, they, they like, uh, use it in situation like this one where I have. Thank you very much for the three questions. Um, I'll take um, the last one and then um, I'll uh, Dana is seated file. Maybe Dana can come over here so, so that she can answer some. I'll share the questions. There are three questions. Uh, I think, in terms of um, the green, I'll have uh, probably um, in terms of, I'll take the last question when they do the CIS increase, um, the factors, and then the other question is uh, the government bonds uh, increase, and then I can take that. So in terms of the green bonds awareness, uh, I'm taking the, the easiest question. <laughs> in terms of uh, government bond, I mean green bonds, first, a bond is a bond, and this is what we try to tell people. But what has been happening is um, a number of people would rather put money into something that contributes to what they believe in. So if you believe that um, a sustainable environment that is protected from the harmful effects of uh, human activity is where my money should be, I will ensure that my money goes to the environment as it were. So you have a lot of um, uh, pension funds, especially pension funds from abroad, that have taken up um, a deliberate responsibility towards uh, greening the environment or stopping the environment from deteriorating further. So from 
an awareness perspective. I think we probably still need to do more uh, in terms of um, sustainability. Also taking into effect the, or taking opportunity of a such situation where we've been affected by the drought in a very um, negative way. I mean, we barely have power, um, some water sources are drying up, and all these are negative aspects that um, previously we only read about in the newspapers, but now they're affecting us. Like I said, you planted something, you used your fertilizer, and nothing came up. That's the effects of um, um, the bad environmental uh, factors that we have. But yes, we take your, um, your challenge. We should be able to get back into the market. At the show, we, for the last two, three years, we have consistently tried to demonstrate the use of finance in uh, um, uh, uh, reducing the effects of um, uh, bad environmental practices. And I think for the last two years, we won prizes, if not the first prize. But it shouldn't end just at the prizes. I think it should end in demonstrating the use of finance to achieve some of these goals. So for us, we had a selfish target of ensuring that uh, at least one entity gets to raise finances using the green um, space. And um, like we said, CEC has been the first company to raise money using green bonds. And uh, we visited their plant. It's not theory, they are generating power. They generate up to about 60 megawatts using green bonds, basically, because that's the money they pumped into uh, doing that. Yeah, we should probably take a little bit more interest in showing that dissemination what happens. Known then, what happens? Why did the CIS go out? Okay. Um, so for those who have been following capital markets, you realize that over the past um, five or so yes, there's been a, a massive spike in terms of uh, collective investment schemes. Um, I think we are starting from around 400 um, um, million, which are, and we are now talking about 2.5 billion as at June 2024. And that has been predominantly driven by the use of technology. So if, if you looked around the room, almost everybody has got a, a mobile phone. And what some of the market players have done Actually, what market player has done is they leverage technology. So make it easy for people to invest. So rather than sit in your office, brick and mortar, you take the technology to the investments to the people, and that's what has given um, the numbers. So we're sitting at um, close to a half a million investors that have actually invested through a uh, mobile app, as opposed to working uh, into an office. So one of the things that we, we need to do is to actually do more of that, leverage a lot on technology, and spread it out from the, the line of rail, as we like calling it. Because a lot of things in Zambia are concentrated along the line of rail. But our outreach should now be to reach uh, more people within the line of rail, but also to reach uh, people that are seated in the, in the rural areas. So some of the initiatives that you see us talking about when we talk capacity, capacity, we're also talking about um, educating more people, both in the rural areas and the urban areas, how to use technology to distribute this channel so that we get more people invested in, uh, in, in collective investment schemes. So a lot of the, some of the activities that you see us doing, talking to school children, having board games and so on, is the push that we are having, that we want to have our people to learn about investments early. If I asked people around the room, we probably didn't even really know about shares, stocks, and bonds. We were in primary school, secondary school, and even college for a lot of us. But now we are teaching the young ones about savings, about the various products in capital markets, in insurance, and so on. And the idea is we want the future generations to be ready to invest in these products. And we also want to make sure that when they make that decision, the platforms are very good. They can walk into a, an office, they can go onto their phone, and they're able to find uh, uh, this product available to them. So there, a lot of the work that we are doing as the Commission is actually around awareness. 
and the, its awareness across all stakeholders, government, investors, school children, whoever we can think of, we educate them because we want to increase participation in yeah, I, I think very, very good because I was just thinking as we were talking about awareness. Uh, Ponzi schemes and illegal schemes, they spread so fast. Before too long, people have invested $3 million, $10 million, and we only get to learn about that as regulators when people lose money. And they're making money, everyone keeps it uh, close to their chest. So we want to use the same channels to try to get to the people. And hopefully we move them away from investing in illegal products into investing in um, uh, products that are better protected than where they, uh, uh, they, they want to put their money. It's, um, sometimes we say people have no job and they have no income, but it's surprising that they still find money to invest in illegal uh, products. I think the media needs to take a keen interest in trying to understand and help us to maybe address the public. What causes the public to react so fast to the illegal products? I know one of them, difficult to talk about it, but it's greedness because in our exposure, we've never seen products that can give you, for instance, a 100% return in a week. It's just that it makes sense. But people have been um, are made to believe that uh, pigs can have pigheads in a week. And they've gone on to invest in agricultural products that promise so much return that it's impossible to have so much milk in a year for one cow. But these are the issues that we need to disseminate. Maybe somebody should write an article about investments, about the returns, and about some of these products. We can't do most of this without you, the media. How possible is it that a pig can have piglets in a week? Because if you're looking at return, if you invest in a pig and there's going to be 100% return, my thinking is this pig is going to have piglets that have to be sold. Otherwise, then how do you get to have the profit? But then nature tells us, otherwise, we haven't reached, maybe especially in Zambia, uh, a level where we have um, all these maybe technological advances where we can print tickets. Uh, I just wanted to break it down and see that uh, this is something that is only possible to be uh, disseminated through the media, and that's what we need to do. Thank you. Uh, the question on um, the government uh, bonds increase is a very interesting one. Uh, as a commission, we are interested in uh, secondary market trades. So when you look at um, the primary side, that is the reserve of the bonds, and, but then um, we are also affected by what happens in the primary market. Because if you recall what happened at the beginning of the year, the Bank of Zambia changed the issuance method of uh, bonds in the primary market by uh, instead of issuing them at a discount, they are now being issued at par value. And then, secondly, there was also a restriction on the, on the, the quantity in terms of how much uh, an investor could, could purchase. So there was a restriction of 5%, uh, as you may be aware. So all those have uh, affected participation in the primary market. And then, in terms of the secondary market trades, because of what was happening in the primary market, a number of people were not very certain about uh, the effects, so there was a lot of sensitization, if you, if you also recall, even from the part of the central bank, um, on uh, investors and whether or not they'll be adversely affected or not. So it's, it's had to take a bit of time for people to settle and be able to realize that ultimately they're not really worse off uh, with the, the issuance method. But then in the secondary markets, you can see that uh, because of that those effects, that there is restrictions in the primary market, and then there is more appetite now that investors have seen that uh, they're not really adversely affected. So that is why we're seeing this trend of an increase. Like we had said, uh, from about 1,800 to 2,100 trades in the last quarter. So it is as a result of uh, those changes that people now, the investors now are beginning to realize that they can participate 
in the secondary market and they're not going to be ad adversely affected by the changes that, uh, that are taking place in the primary market. Yeah, but uh, in addition to what Diana said, um, what has increased is the number of trades. Remember I said the value itself has gone down. So what we've noticed is that there are more retail investors participating. So you have, you know, retail by nature, you have a lot of transactions. You could have two um, large-scale investors buying the entire world, but what we have now is a number of retail participants, which is good. It's good um, uh, from one particular angle. Retail investors are unlikely to run away from a particular market. And retail investors are likely to be locals. So all these are positives. Um, uh, locals are likely to believe more in the economy than the foreigners. An exchange rate moving, everyone would probably want to move money out. But if you have more retail people participating, I think this is a positive development for, our, for the market. So we need to have more and more retail uh, people participating. And may I add, uh, CEO, that um, if you also have observed that uh, the Bank of Zambia has actually made it even much easier for uh, secondary market trades, even by individuals, by the portal that has been established. So you don't necessarily now have to walk into your, 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 your bank to be able to open an account. You, you can do it from the comfort of your, of your home. Like Nonde had mentioned earlier, technology right now is key. And uh, that has seen a lot of these uh, trades from the retail uh, side because of the technological aspect, which has facilitated. Just, just, just what I clarify on the, on the restriction we talked about earlier. So it's the 5% restriction that the Bank of Zambia put by foreign investors. And again, it speaks to uh, the, the drive by government to localize as much as possible the rest of the funding because of um, the debt sustainability strategy that the government has impact on. So that's, that's some of the effects that we're seeing are built and come to the secondary report market that they have and they have spoken to. Next questions? Next three questions? Oh, the next question? Yes, sir. We have come as a matter of interest the use of government bonds how does it uh, affect in the those that there's restrictions in the amount of money one can get and uh, with bonds to something like this and limited you can get a lot of money but sometimes the the bank sometimes have limited cash so when it comes to product so how does it uh, affect the <coughs> How does it not pressure on the commercial banks in terms of cash? Okay, in terms of um, um, in terms of bonds, I think what my colleagues have said is um, one fundamental um, issue we need to communicate is um, there's now that Bank of Zambia. App. I don't know whether you, you colleagues have seen it. Okay. It's there. Um, Leah or somebody, maybe you can point, somebody who can point. I've got it on my phone, but my phone is not. Now you can invest in a bond. You can be at the central bank right from your mobile phone. So you do not need to even speak to your bank. The only thing you need to is to have money in your bank. So you do not need a, um, a commercial bank to be on your behalf. But you can still do it, especially as we are trying to uh, have people fully appreciate how bonds and uh, all these assets um, uh, operate. You can still speak to your bank and, uh, uh, and, and, and buy a bond. The restriction from, bank, from banks, let me put it that way, depends on which bank you are with. So they may not want to deal with a person with 1,000, but they may only deal with 10,000. But I bet you can still find a bank that can um, 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 accept your bid. The minimum investment amount is 1,000 kwacha as far as the central bank is concerned. So with the 1,000 kwacha, 
you can buy a bond. If your bank, if your bank does not accept 1,000 questions, use a mobile phone. So that there's absolutely no restriction and your bank does not say we do not uh, get to do uh, so, so there are a lot of avenues that are opening up and for us that's exciting because the more retail you have the less pressure government will have for instance to raise money from a few um, uh, investors because if you get to understand even the pricing the pricing is driven by a bidding process the big guys are more likely to um, uh, bid higher than the retail. And this plays into uh, maintaining or lowering the rates or the yields that we get to see on the market. If you get to see the results in the private market when they are issued uh, um, successful yields, you actually get to see that almost every bidding the government through the central bank rejects some bidders. If the money is too expensive, the government just says we are not buying this expensive money. Our um, appetite is up to this particular level. So retail guys are likely, are unlikely to push high, uh, which, which is, which is um, uh, an advantage. But also, the more local investors we get, the less pressure on forex. I don't need dollars. Most of us don't even have dollar accounts. We can do with pressure. But the more you attract foreign money, the more pressure there is on the dollars. Yes, they bring in dollars to buy bonds, but depending on their view of the market, they may also want to have dollars out. And this is where you get to see sometimes the pressure on the market. Um, that's why there's now a 5% restriction by foreign entities to buy in the private market. They can only buy, if they want the bonds, and more than 5%, then they have to go into the secondary market. Any other question? We are trying to get clarification on the, uh, in terms of corporate bonds. We do so much about the corporate bonds. We just highlighted the things that are about the corporate million dollars. Yes. What about other entities? Uh, one very good question, and uh, apologies if we have glossed over. I think I did say that um, uh, corporate bonds were standing at 2.5 billion, and um, out of that 2.5 billion, only 53 million dollars worth of that relates to CC. But that's the latest bond that we had uh, issues. We have uh, five, six other bonds. I don't have the data here, but we can share. We have other five bonds that are outstanding. What I have in mind is Zambia Home Loans, Bayport, and a few others. So it's not only CEC that has gone onto the market. But then if you see the spectrum of the entities that have raised money through the bonds, Quite a number of them are microfinance institutions. And let me explain why. Because for a corporate bond issuance, you are basically having to compete with the government. The government is issuing government bonds, corporate, corporate bonds. But you're going into the same market to get the quarter. So the person with the highest yield or the highest return wins. And mind you, as part of the return, risk assessments are there. In most of the um, uh, corporate finance um, uh, discussions, governments are less likely to default compared to individuals. So that gets to affect the corporate uh, entities. So, but the corporate entities are likely to raise money if the government appetite goes down. But you may know that in the last couple of years, government appetite has been quite high in raising the money. And this is why the yields are still stuck at 25, 26% because of that. But we still have um, uh, corporate bonds that have been issued, and they are outstanding. We can share uh, the details. They are about 70, you could see from the CEC. 
So, so just, just perhaps to also augment what the CEO has talked about. So if you look at our, um, the key projects that we are pushing, most we are trying to develop the corporate bond market is we've got a lot of emphasis on green bond uh, development. And that's a key development area for us. It feeds into our vision aspirations for greening the economy. So the green bond is one of the instruments that we've chosen to uh, to finance uh, green uh, projects uh, in, in Zambia. So CC is one of them. Um, we did mention the uh, revenue bonds. So we want our local municipalities to raise uh, bonds, but we want them to be green. Because you and I live in the communities where there's all these things that are affecting us. So climate change affects us. I think CEO did talk about um, drought, streams drying up, and even in the communities where we live, we also are grappling with water shortage, we are grappling with uh, garbage issues, you know, waste management. So we want the municipalities to address those issues by raising our finance uh, through the capital markets, uh, uh, by raising our, uh, these uh, corporate bonds. So one of the key challenges we have is around um, project finance. Um, we want projects, but the market has been used to um, has been used to financing institutions. So that's one of the challenges that we have. Then the other big one, we talked about it earlier, is local participation. So if you look at the CEC, one of the things that we want to address is there, was, there wasn't much local participation. And it, that presents um, forex pressures on, on Zambia because CEC paid a coupon of 2.6 million in June, July. And all that money went out. And we're asking ourselves at the commission, why did that money stay in Zambia with our local investors? So those are some of the aspects that we're trying to address in developing uh, the corporate bond market. Make sure they're good, but at the same time, we're also talking about bigger figures um, um, than just the 54 million from CC and the 2.5 million quarter that have been raised by the others. Yeah, just as I mean, my colleague has just been. The highest, of course, is CEC. Out of the 2.5 billion, 1.3 billion, 1.34 billion is CEC. But you may recall that last year, IFC, the IFC, the World Bank, um, raised 427 million. So that's almost like uh, two thirds of uh, the whole time. 281 million is Bearport Financial Services. And uh, real estate investment Zambia are seated at um, two, uh, about 236. About 228. Yeah. But we can provide the details. Um, uh, any other questions? I see no further questions, but uh, you have our emails, uh, phones, uh, keep sending the questions. Um, we will provide information as and when, or if we have. Thank you very much for coming to the second quarter market brief. Apologies again. Be rest assured that the next one will start exactly at nine hours. Whether we're just the two of us or three people, I think let's keep the momentum so that we know that that's it. When they say nine hours, it's nine hours.